I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Tuesday, June the 28th. Let's begin with a familiar topic, Benghazi. It's not an Arkansas topic except a former Arkies right in the middle of it. That would be former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the presidential candidate. A hyper-partisan House panel led by Republicans and which carried on one of the longest investigations in memory finally issued its report today and, and finds no fault to be added additionally to Hillary Clinton. Perhaps some people in state and military should have anticipated problems better than they did in Libya. There are a lot of woulda, shoulda, couldas about our actions in world trouble spots. But despite a concerted effort to Hillary Clinton, they didn't catch the coyote. <laughs> or excuse me, catch the roadrunner. The coyotes didn't. It was whitewater redux, it seems to me. Elsewhere in the news, the U.S. Supreme Court has added to the to the pro-choice side of the ledger with rulings upholding lower court findings in Mississippi and Wisconsin that said laws that, that require abortion clinics to hire doctors who have hospital admitting privileges or undue burdens on women. They're unnecessary, they're unconstitutional. The issue here is, is that Arkansas has an identical law that has been temporarily enjoined by a district court judge. The question today is whether Attorney General Leslie Rutledge will continue to appeal fruitlessly to spend her money and to run up the legal bills for the plaintiffs who will ultimately win this lawsuit by continuing to fight something that she can't win. She has done that before. She says she's still studying the matter. The Walton Family Foundation continues its work to tear down the public school districts of America it said today that it's going to provide $250 million to help build charter school facilities in 17 cities, including Little Rock. There is not, I don't believe, a charter school in Little Rock that hasn't already enjoyed Walton support. They've stepped in with needed facilities money to get schools open that have drained away white students from Little Rock School District. They clearly showed, nine, showed no signs of backing up, although all the evidence to date, and including a stunning story today out of Detroit in the New York Times, show that charter schools simply don't do anything any better than public schools and often do far worse and they lack accountability besides. Last night the State Board of Education held interviews with people hoping to sit on the Community Advisory Board of the Little Rock School District which is currently under state control. State Ed Education Commissioner Johnny Key will decide by July who he wants to recommend for the board to approve for that board. The betting, and from my point, is on a Republican activist who favored the dissolution of the school district and several parents who fled majority black schools in the district to go to majority white charter schools, but perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps Johnny Key will uh, put together a diverse group of citizens to run the school districts who really care about the school district and not about leaving it. We should hope so. Sometime today, I'm expecting the filing in the Mike Maggio case, the one in which they're seeking civil damages against a nursing home owner and former Senator Gilbert Baker for allegedly bribing Mike Maggio to reduce a verdict against a nursing home that was negligent in Greenbrier. A jury gave a $5 million verdict that was reduced by $4 million because Mike Maggio himself has admitted he got bribes in the form of campaign contributions from a nursing home owner. What's going to be really interesting here, we think, is further information taken from pretrial testimony about the, the breadth of this effort by Michael Morton, a nursing home owner, to do something about nursing home negligence decisions. I don't think this was the only race in which he made campaign contributions, particularly of interest in which, what has come up in the depositions is Gilbert Baker's effort to raise money for Juan, Rhonda Wood, another person from Conway like he is who was elected to the Supreme Court, thanks in part to a tremendous sum of money from nursing home owners, including Michael Morton. Also, uh, good news for Chase Conk, the UALR athletic director. He's gotten an extended contract till 2020. He's been a winner out there, and the campus hopes he'll continue to be. And finally, on a funny note, we need a laugh, don't we? I don't know if you can hear me. The air conditioner just kicked on. I hope you can. I'll speak up. Ernie Dumas has a funny column this week about some historical articles about a former congressman from Arkansas, Took Gathings, who once... Uh, raised Mexican immigrants in his political life, but he was for them because he wanted them to come and work so that they would harm black workers. This was in the bad old days of segregation. Even more interesting is the time took Gathings, who was worried about the influence of sex on TV, did the hoochie coochie in Congress to show them about the terrible sorts of things you see on television. Oh, if we only had YouTube back then. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.